Hey guys, this is Arnabus98, and here are my, um, here's the part 2 of my first order transporter mod. This is a version 2, and I think this thing actually is officially called the AAL, the Atmospheric Assault Lander. Yeah, so as you can see from the outside, not much has really happened. Um, I might have added a few details here and there, but otherwise it's the same. And you'll see what I did to this thing. Uh, I gave a preview on this on my last vlog, so... Yeah, pretty much the same. First, of course, you can remove the roof. Mm, the roof kind of looks a bit different. You'll see why. And this thing has been offset. Like The roof has gotten shorter, like one stud. You'll see why. And this thing kind of hangs off the edge. And you see not much here. The door there has this annoying Technic thing of blue color. And, and even the piece is like dark, light gray instead of dark gray. I couldn't do anything about it. You'll see why. All this is the same. But then, you could take off the entire, um, <clears throat> command, um, thing, command bridge, whatever, and the hatch. And then, there you go, it's an interior. I cleared out, most of this was originally just a bunch of, like, Technic stuff, and even the floor was, like, hollow. So, I added a few more spaces, because in the cross-sections of the first order transporter, there is, like, a back to it, and it's kind of what the crew compartment is. And even the, I even kept the, the lifting the seat still here. I saved a few parts off the side to gain more like room and stuff. Wow, this was really annoying to make, but it was also fun at the same time. I kind of feel like, I kind of enjoy modding this thing more than making a new transformer because I know a lot of people will care for it. Yeah, like this set is really well designed, like 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 what Lego was able to do because it is very sturdy. In, in order to remove some certain parts in here, you have to like take off the engines and then like take off the things on the side and they just like pry it open just to get a few parts out. It shows that everything's super sturdy and it did take me a while. I removed those like a huge Technic beam on the top and all this. I don't want to give a tutorial, but yeah. I don't add much to the back. I don't know what to put here. I put a gun rack here with one gun here. And of course these little crates. I don't know why it has a white top, but I put some studs in here because they came with extra studs for the the turret over there. So I decided to stick them in there. Something Lego probably would have done if they added the back. And the coolest thing about here is the door here. That's why you saw that that those Technic pieces. Uh, the door here it actually opens by the way. You get, yeah this is wobbling a bit because it's not really that sturdy. And then you could just flip this switch down and fold it out. And there you go, the door can open and close. And you can see that thing kind of locks the door in place when it's in flight. It does wobble a bit. I wish I had that railing piece to hold it in place. I don't ha I have some on certain sets, but I don't want to take it apart. Yeah, it opens and closes. And that is very cool. It doesn't close all the way due to the length of the, the um, transporter. It's like the width of the transporter. But it opens far enough to stick a stormtrooper through. No, yeah. And what else do I have? Yeah, that thing is very cool. The interior. It's pretty much the same. Yeah, the door does wobble when you try to put the seat back up. I'm gonna try to fill up this uh, transporter so you can see what it's like. So here's the transporter with all the troops and Captain Phasma from the original set, and I also had the the first order officer and first order crew from the TIE fighter since they don't go anywhere in that set you can just stick them in the back since it's like it's kind of a crew compartment I don't know they could sit there and have their coffee break you could probably fit like one other guy if you remove these little crates and that gun rack so that's cool and of course you could take the stormtrooper put him on his seat and the cool thing is that like if you if you had the stormtrooper with his gun in it kind of doesn't raise with it so you could take his gun off and stick it on this rack so that's very sweet yeah, and if I had the first order battle pack, I'd definitely like put the guy like inside the command and command, whatever the oh, control cabin, whatever it is. Yeah, and you could definitely yeah, I definitely need the first order battle pack two of them just to fill this this baby up. And of course, you could lock the door in place with this. Yeah, it's very simple. And then you can put the top back on. I always, you always have to put um, this one on first before that one, or else if you take this one off first, this gun might pop off. You can put the top back on, and then yeah, the stormtrooper still comes back up. It's exactly the same. So I did not do much with this. I just removed the left arm Technic piece on the other side because they kind of take up some unnecessary space. This might wobble a bit more than usual, but I think it's fine. 
And the thing about the door, the reason why it's wobbly is because I tried to, like, I really wanted to make it so stormtroopers could fit in without, um... Yeah, you just fit in with clearance. Because I don't want incidents like, um, this from happening. Take over. Now that I'm done with, I think I'm pretty much done with the, uh, um, interior of this thing, which I did some, a lot of interior design, and... Of course, one thing I forgot to show is that, um... Oh, man. Come, on, come out. That's why it's pretty sturdy. Um, I added this inverted, um, <coughs> slope piece so this thing won't come off as easily. Which helps so it doesn't come off when you pull the cabin off. So, that's easy and really simple to do. Because that thing originally was just an ordinary brick, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe, was, I think it was uh, where the Technic bricks were. The whole thing, holding it for, like, structure. And you can put both hats, both tops on. I like having them separate because you can just take this one off just to put the troops in. And you just take that off to get to the crew compartment. And one thing I also did is, as you can see, this thing is not rolling. And you flip to the bottom, I added the little landing gear. And, of course, right now they're in kind of in, like, their stowed away position. And this thing's kind of in, like, flight mode. Yeah, this thing, this thing makes this thing so much more accurate. And I don't think anyone has done this yet, adding landing gear to that first order transporter. So, you just yank these things out, and it's really simple. Because... Uh, the one thing LEGO kind of did inaccurate with the first order transporter, besides, besides like the length, is they added clear wheels to like represent it like hovering, but it obviously doesn't hover, because if you think about it, this thing would be really weird hovering, and then like the the front like hat would just like drag around on the floor, which would be really strange. So I added the landing gear, and these are really simple to do. I added a Technic piece, and then a one times, a three long a Technic arm, and then some uh, axles and like pieces here. I'm really bad at naming pieces. Oh wow, that's really bright. All right, and now you can just land it on the ground. Bam. Yeah, these things are wobbly, so they can position themselves like with gravity. Oh wow, what's going on with the camera? Yeah, it's better. Okay. And yeah, I think that should be it about for this first order transporter. And the cool thing is when you put these things back down. They don't interfere with this, um, the front hatch. It's, they slot just exactly in to, yeah. And you can set this thing down and have the hatch open. Yeah, that looks really cool. I think I did a really good job with this, and sometimes I do push in once in a while. It's, it's a slight problem, but I could deal with it easily. This might be it for my version 2 of the first order transporter mods I made. I just like cleared out the back here and added the landing gear and added a sliding door, which is pretty cool. I don't think and I don't see that I haven't seen anyone do that so far. So I might be a first. And I think this might be it for this video. Uh I'm not sure if I'll add any more mods. I know I, I saw someone make the, the this like tower like much smaller by replacing this um four times something um panel with the uh, half one. Which, I don't have that piece, but ironically it comes in the first order battle pack, so I could think about making this thing smaller, because this thing does waste a lot of space, just to hold one pilot. And I'm not sure I'll do any other mods. I might mod the, um, the, um, uh, first order TIE Fighter, because this thing needs the inner wings, and so just like the outside. But I might need to use Bricklink for that, which I don't have a Bricklink yet. <laughs> yeah. This thing, that, that would make this thing look so much better. Maybe the bottom turret, but... Yeah, in the meantime, I still have to wait for the <laughs> resistance transporter to come to my house. Yeah, I'm still, I still want Poe's X-Wing. I don't know why. On Amazon, it was, like, sold out, but I'll, I'll get it soon. And I also saw the... Um, I heard about they're making a resistance X-Wing for the summer wave this year. Which is just the blue and white, or blue and gray one. <clears throat> the ordinary X-Wing. And I don't think I'll do any mods to the resistance transporter. It, it looks really good, and it looks pretty complete, unlike this thing, which obviously LEGO wouldn't have a budget for. I think this should be about it for this video, and I'll probably get working on my next LEGO Transformer. I'll see you guys.